punch out. And I know I said Mario didn't have a plot, but this is just a mildly racist boxing game. I mean, how, how many punch out games even are there? There's 10. Well, we could knock it down to five or six if we just discard spin-offs, a Game & Watch game, and a couple re-releases. But I've got to fill time, so we're going to talk about all of these. Going back to 1984, we have the first of the arcade releases with Punch-Out! Play as uh, this handsome fella as he works his way through the WVBA, World Video Boxing Association. I really hope we're not fourth wall breaking already and it's named that in-universe because it's televised or something. But anyway, if you're familiar with Punch-Out at all, you might recognize a few of the characters we face up against, including Glass Joe, Bald Bull, and Mr. Sandman. They're the ones that end up being most prominent later on. Before each fight, we have some stats on these guys, which, which might be important later. But for now, you'll take on the six opponents and obtain a championship belt. After that, you simply keep going until you lose. Interestingly, according to some promotional material for the game, every fight from Glass Joe to Mr. Sandman takes place on the same night, Monday, July 30th, 1984. Now, I, I don't really know anything about boxing, but that still seems like a lot to do in one night. I don't want to fight six guys in one night, fight six guys in one night until I lose, let alone fight six guys in a year. That's too much. I don't like this. Anyway, I've always been fascinated with endings in arcade games. It all started with Missile Command. If you don't know it by name, you've probably seen it or a game similar to it before. You're in charge of a military base defending a number of cities from an oncoming missile attack. I played it a few times as a kid, either emulated or in one of those Atari multi-packs, but I didn't think too much about it. I'd play for a while, get frustrated by the difficulty, and move on. But years later, I heard about the creator, David Thor. How you would have nightmares for years following its release. Nightmares about being in one of those cities. In fact, originally they were meant to be named after nearby cities along the California coast. Missile Command is designed like any other arcade game from the era. It ends only when the player dies and runs out of quarters. It doesn't matter how many stages you clear, it doesn't matter how many cities you save, that is the ending. Eventually, you will lose. There's no escape, there's no victory, that's the canon. And that made me rethink a lot of arcade games, trying to contextualize its story with the mechanics that were ultimately meant to suck up quarters. Now obviously this doesn't fit with every arcade game. Pac-Man doesn't die at the end of Pac-Man, Mario canonically saves Pauline in Donkey Kong. But for Punch-Out? Punch-Out's a sports game, this could work. Eventually, our challenger keeps fighting until he loses the belt. That works as an ending for me. Mission accomplished. In the same year, we got boxing for the Game & Watch system. It was either released as Punch-Out in North America or later re-released, I'm not sure which. But either way, it's just two dudes punching. It's... it's probably canon. There's no narrative. Just a few months later, Super Punch-Out was released, and the premise, as you can imagine, is pretty much the same. You're just boxing. He plays the same unnamed challenger, although now with a fancy new haircut. He again has to make his way up through the WBBA, although now instead of going through the ranks sequentially, he just has to fight the champions of four different countries and then finally the world champ. Because of this and the fact that there isn't a specific US champ, uh, I think it's safe to say that he's still the champion from the first Punch-Out game, which means I really should have just deleted that whole paragraph from the script. I didn't need that whole thing about Missile Command, and that's... Just Anyway, all the opponents are brand new in this game, and they all pop up in later games as well. I want to bring special attention to Vodka Drankinski, and yes, that is the name of a character in a Nintendo game. First of all, he's listed as being the champion of the USSR, which will be important later. Secondly, for what I hope would be obvious reasons, when he shows up later in the games, he is renamed to Soda Popinski. However, with the other characters' names being things like Bear Hugger and Dragon Chan, I think it's safe to say that these are all stage names. And this could have been an in-universe name change as well. I mean, just for reference, Mad, Mothers Against Drunk Driving, would have been at its height in the mid-80s, as they had just passed the National Minimum Drinking Age Act in July of 1984. Taking a quick detour to a game that's not technically a Punch-Out game, we have Arm Wrestling. Imagine a game exactly like Punch-Out, but about arm wrestling. You play as a green-haired guy who may or may not be the same character from the Punch-Out games, going up against a variety of colorful characters. We got a Texan, a sumo wrestler, a mystery masked fighter, a battlebot ape, and Frankenstein's monster. So other than the similar setup, you might be asking, what does this have to do with Punch-Out? In order to defeat the masked fighter, you have to rip off his mask and reveal that he's actually Bald Bull from the first game. Neat. Also, unlike the Punch-Out series, after beating all the fighters and looping back through, you'll actually reach an ending. After winning 20 matches in a row, the coordinator runs out of money and closes up shop. Good job! So for the home console debut of the series, we actually have three different versions to go over. Punch-Out, just 
just Punch Out, just like that one, so it's probably gonna get confusing, was first released as a prize for a tournament in another Nintendo sports game, Golf US Course, the game where Mario debuted his most patriotic outfit. So 10,000 players of Golf were gifted a fancy gold edition of Punch Out, and 90% of it is the same as these other versions, so just jump right into it. Just like the arcade games, you play as a WVBA challenger and work your way up to champion. This time, we have an actual character as a protagonist, as Little Mac. Mac lives up to his moniker being only 107 pounds, but he's been training with Doc Lewis. Doc used to be a heavyweight boxer around 1954, and has apparently been teaching Mac how to hold his own. He takes on the minor, major, and finally world circuit, fighting a mix of old and new boxers. Beating the world circuit nets you an ending that, for me, is amazing, because it's exactly the kind of thing I love, because I think my brain may be broken. You get a newspaper with a definitive date. The newspaper is dated April 1st, 1987, citing the last fight of the world circuit to have taken place the night before, dating the fight between Little Mac and Super Macho Man as March 31st, 1987. Anyway, if you've heard of this game, you probably know it as Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, the second version of the game. Do, do, do you want to know what that version had? Did you guess Mike Tyson? Due to choosing not to renew the license for Mike Tyson, Nintendo released a third version of the game, replacing him with Mr. Dream from Dreamland. He fights exactly the same way as Tyson, he just looks more generic, but his stats are considerably better, going 99-0 compared to Mike Tyson's real, at the time, 34-0. Speaking of stats, I mentioned my brain was broken, right? Here are the stats of every character that appears in multiple installments throughout the Punch-Out! series. For example, the last Joe has lost 2 pounds since the arcade game, and we can infer that he was 35 originally. Now, Super Punch-Out! did not give us any explicit information about its fighters. However, through gameplay and this information here, we can find something wrong with Super Macho Man. His record in the NES game is spotless, but we see him lose in Super Punch-Out! So we have a few ways we can square this. First of all, maybe it's a mistake. Maybe either in-universe, the fight coordinator messed up the stats in NES Punch-Out, or out-of-universe, the developers just forgot this game existed. Second option, Super Punch-Out is non-canon. I don't like that. That's too much of a cop-out. I think we can do better. Or thirdly, and this is getting into game theory territory, RIP MatPat, a match result can be overturned if a fighter was found to be cheating. Now, it's hard to define what cheating would be in the world of the WVBA, as I'm pretty sure nearly every opponent in the series does something that would be illegal in a regular boxing match. In fact, for whatever reason, the Punch-Out! fan wiki has a list of rule infractions for every single fighter. Seems a little ridiculous to put on a fan wiki, but in this case, it came in handy. The challenger from both arcade games only has one match with any infractions, and it just so happens to be the fight with Super Macho Man. So when Super Macho Man does a spin, the challenger can punch him in the back of the head, which is illegal under traditional rules. Cool, simple, case closed, we figured it out. Except Little Mac does the exact same thing in the NES Punch-Out, and he gets to go on to fight Mr. Dream, the Mr. Dream with a 99-0 record. I, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was a mistake. Or maybe they tested him for drugs. In 1994, Nintendo decided to really break the mold by releasing the sequel to Punch-Out, Super Punch-Out. Now, immediately you might notice that this guy doesn't look anything like our previous two protagonists. You might be thinking, like, who is this chump? Well, let's get all of our information together. Early screenshots in Nintendo Power show off a protagonist that looks identical to Little Mac, so it seems that he was at least intended to return initially. And these issues came out only two months away from release, so this was a change that was made late in development. The game itself allows you to name your character, so there's no help there either. Years later, when the game was re-released on the Wii Virtual Console, the description refers to this protagonist as Mac, as does the description on the NSO service. Not to get ahead of myself. Where'd he go? Where'd he go? But, not to get too far ahead of myself, the gameplay director of the next game in the series, Bryce Holiday, said in an interview that Little Mac does not appear in the Super Punch-Out! universe. To be clear, I don't think his usage of the word universe is literal in this context. But then later, the official website for the game lists Super in the history section, describing the protagonist as a fair-haired Little Mac. So after all that, I don't really, I don't have an answer. I don't know who this chump is. It could be this guy. Not that guy. Uh, this guy. I tend to lean more towards it actually being Little Mac, as that seems to be what Nintendo prefers in their marketing, but honestly, like, it could go either way. So Mac again has to make it back through the WVBA Championship, which this time has the normal minor, major, and world circuits, but also a special circuit to cap it off. Quick little fact, it seems the WVBA is following the Nintendo Video... Video Boxing Association rules, as listed in the North American Manual for Super Punch-Out, which lists... There are no illegal moves or punches. So I guess I didn't need that whole paragraph about the uh, the rule infractions. Just gonna take that. Just gonna. All right. 
I needed that page. Now it's time for stats. And then I'm going to do a star wipe. We have even more problems with this game. Bald Bowl has racked up 15 losses since the last game, which, you know, fine, maybe he had a bad year. And it had to be one year because he has not aged, which means that this game takes place in late 87, early 88, somewhere in there. Or at least I did think that until we get to Mr. Sandman. Mr. Sandman has different stats between the US version and the Japanese version of Super Punch-Out. I'm defaulting to the Japanese version because it's a Japanese game. Sandman has gained one win and two losses, which might explain why he went down from the world circuit to the major circuit. But he also de-aged. He's listed at 31 in the NES version and 30 in the Super Nintendo version. 28 in the English version, so I'm definitely not going with that one. Now, Super Macho Man has actually aged a year, but he's lost six wins. Something like this I can at least explain. It's maybe he was caught doping, I don't know. But this de-aging? I, I have no answer, I don't know. I think the only explanation for this age discrepancy is a mistake. Either in-universe or out, his age has been misrepresented somewhere. Anyway, Little Mac or fake Little Mac wins against everybody. There's no post-championship fight or bonus circuit after winning, so that, that's it. So to recap, we've had Punch-Out, Super Punch-Out, Arm Wrestling, Punch-Out, Punch-Out, Super Punch-Out. Can you guess what's next? Is Punch-Out. After 15 years, we got a new entry on the Wii. Little Mac and Doc Lewis are back, and again, he's working his way through the WBBA circuits. Nothing crazy here, most of the same characters return from the NES game, Bear Hugger returns from the Super Nintendo game, and we even got a new character in Disco Kid. There's no special circuit, but if Mac becomes champion, he then has to defend his title. To do this, he again must fight through each circuit in order, but this time, each of the fighters has a new gimmick. For example, Glass Joe gets some headgear, King Hippo gets a manhole to put on his belly, and Mr. Sandman punches down a whole building! Once Little Mac successfully defends his title, he decides he wants to go out on top. He'll continue fighting, but once he gets three losses, he'll retire, which means permanently locking the career mode on your profile. Right. I've got more stuff to cover, so I'll get back to that. There's also an exhibition mode where Mac can refight opponents he's already beaten outside of career mode. Each of these have certain criteria that can be fulfilled, some requiring multiple fights, like letting Glass Joe win, but also knocking him out in one punch. It's now time to return to my favorite part of the episode, the spreadsheet. So looking at each fighter's record, you can tell it's identical to the NES version. With how the cutscenes are framed, Mac doesn't appear to be a returning champ, and with the records reverting to how they were originally, I think it's safe to say that the Wii version is a remake of the NES game. With three exceptions. Super Macho Man went from 35 to 0 to 35 to 1. Mr. Sandman, 27 to 2 to 31 to 0. Soda Popinski, USSR to Russia. Super Macho Man's new stats actually reconcile the problem we had earlier with him, but then Mr. Sandman comes in and makes things worse for two reasons. One, he has to lose at the end of Punch-Out, but he has a clean record, and two, he has a higher win count than he does in what would be the sequel of the Super Nintendo game. Now, since we already have a problem with the SNES version with age, I'm willing to just throw these stats out altogether. Just wipe the slate clean. Now for the big one. Obviously, the USSR had been dissolved for about 20 years by the time this game came out, so it makes sense they would update his location. You don't want a bunch of kids asking where the hell Usser is. But this does make it harder to use the newspaper at the end of the NES game as a good date indicator. So the USSR officially disbanded in 1991. Does this mean that the Wii game can't take place after that? Not exactly. It wouldn't quite make sense, but it is possible. The USSR was still casually referred to as Russia during its time, and Russia did exist as a republic within the Soviet Union. So it'd be kind of like saying Bear Hugger here is from British Columbia instead of Canada. So, I mean, immediately that would mean the WVBA's verbiage is internally inconsistent, so I, I don't think that's the case. So it's more than likely this game takes place after December of 1991. If that's the case, and we also consider the date of July 30th, 1984 from the Arcade Punch-Out, we can figure out an upper bound on when this game takes place. Using ages! If we look, Mr. Sandman is 31 in the Wii game, which would mean in the Arcade game he'd be a bare minimum of 24. While we don't know an age limit for the WVBA, I think Little Mac is probably pushing it at 17, so we'll use that as a minimum age. So for safety, I think 1997 would be a pretty hard limit as far as Mr. Sandman's age. But don't forget about Super Punch-Out on the Super Nintendo. Piston Hurricane is in both this and the arcade game, and he's listed as 25 in the Super Nintendo game. And remember, the Super Nintendo game has to take place a year after the NES and Wii game because Bald Bull is the same age and Super Macho Man is aged by a year. So if we were to set Piston Hurricane's age as 17 in 1984, the earliest this could be would be late 92 or early 93, and a year before that is early 92 or late 91. 
or these dates don't mean anything at all, and I just wasted all my time talking about them. There's also a short little game released exclusively to Club Nintendo members. It's just a couple of like sparring sessions between Mac and Doc Lewis. That probably takes place just before Punch Out in like early 91. So with all of these games, let's recap and try to build a complete timeline. So we have the original arcade punch out taking place entirely on the night of July 30th, 1984, where a nameless challenger becomes world champ. Super punch out would be shortly afterwards with the same guy doing it again against a bunch of national champions. Arm wrestling, I would assume, would be sometime around here as well. Maybe the champ retired to pursue a more lucrative sport. Uh, boxing or Game & Watch punch out could literally be at any time since the invention of boxing, so I'm not even going to bother. Doc Lewis's Punch-Out shows Little Mac training with the Doc presumably around 1990 to 91. Then Punch-Out Wii, Mac becomes champ, does a bunch of exhibition fights, defends his title, does more exhibition fights, and then decides to fight random opponents until losing three times and deciding to retire early. SNES Super Punch-Out at Max takes place a year later with either a new guy or Mac coming back after a die job. Maybe he's hiding his identity so it doesn't look like he's breaking his word to the Doc. And he becomes the world champion once again. Now that that's all done, I think I can safely finish my save file and let Mac retire. No, 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 no. I'm supposed to get away from Mario. <laughs> 